ओके सो टुडे इज ए स्पेशल वीडियो इट्स नॉट अबाउट टीचिंग ए पर्टिकुलर टॉपिक बट वी विल डिस्कस अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टॉपिक सो बेसिकली आई सी अ लॉट ऑफ कैंडिडेट्स हु वॉन्ट्स टू जॉइन द इंटेंसिव के यूनिट दे गो फॉर इंटरव्यू टू जॉइन सम आई सी यूज और दे सम ऑफ देम वॉन्ट्स टू परस्यू इंटेंसिव के यूनिट और इंटेंसिव के मेडिसिन सो वैन दे कम टू मी फॉर इंटरव्यू आई सर्टन थिंग्स एंड वैन दे जॉइन द आई सी यूज दे फेल दैट दे शुड हैव नोन सर्टन थिंग्स बिफोर to work in the icu so we thought of uh, rather than explaining what all things one should know we have two live experiences with us we have dr radhika with us who is a fresher uh, mm -hmm. and she wants to pursue her career in intensive care unit and we have dr chandras he is a consultant in medicine and he has been with us for last couple of months and he will remain us for one year and then he will go to serve his native place so he was in a government institute and now he has come with us for gaining exposure of an tertiary care intensive care unit so he is a post graduate she is a graduate will uh, ask them will discuss with them what all things they feel uh, they should have known before or now they have learned and this will help other candidates who are listening this video so that they can stress upon those things and the anxiety part will go away in the end we'll conclude with uh, some of the inputs which i can share so let's start so dr radhika we have noted down certain points before this session so that we don't miss out certain things uh, in a casual way so dr radhika uh, tell me when you first entered the icu uh, not uh, as an intern or not as a graduate person but when you entered in icu uh, when you, for pursuing career in intensive care units so what all things what feeling you get that oh these things i should have stressed before or i should have known before um, coming to the intensive care unit you can always take care of the things you have noted down uh, so sir i'll start with the uh, uh, i recall the first day hmm. my icu when i entered in the icu hmm. uh, and before that the interview i have given for the so the question i have asked the hmm. in the first question do i have any knowledge about the ventilator huh. or can i intubate hmm. so these are the major thing i got to know these are the very important th things to uh, get in the in the icu hmm. so um, after the interview for, for the first interview then i started in the icu hmm. the first thing i got to know it is very important to have a knowledge about the ventilator hmm. but for me personally i thought the first thing i should know the diagnosis what is going on with the patient okay so i started with uh, knowing the patient's diagnosis his symptoms vitals uh, the stage of the, his disease then uh, what uh, treatment he is get, getting okay so then uh, for me first of all the management part was important mm. then the vitals then i went to the procedures the so first of all i uh, started uh, learning the ventilator settings okay. the procedure i've started uh, the intubation mm. the lines mm. so uh, these are the things then the abg interpretation was very okay. important for okay. me to understand the acid base uh, base balance the electrolyte balance okay. mm. Mm, and uh, the shock patients a uh, lot types of, of shock, uh, huh? types of shock mm. how to manage when to give fluids when to give uh, crystalloids what how i need to manage if Uh, so these were the initial things i learned so the uh, so what radhika wants to say that whenever she goes for interview for any intensive care unit the first thing they ask whether you can intubate the patient or not because this is very very important skill which one should learn not even for intensive care unit anybody who is pursuing medicine should know how to manage the airway even if you can't uh, intubate in the early stages you should know how to do a proper a acls bls and embu the patient this can save the life of the patient and in your anxiety part will go away because in any interview or any place where you apply a job they will the first thing they will ask whether you can intubate the patient if you can intubate the patient that is more than enough for getting a job uh, from procedure point of view because central lines arterial lines any other procedure always there are seniors available always there is a team available and you can get the help um, in sh very short amount of time within minutes so that's not an important but when to put the lines when not to put the lines these are important so other than ventilator other than your abg interpretation we'll come to that in the end and uh, um, uh, your uh, diagnosis of the patients and vitals uh, 
also you need to understand uh, uh, what are the importance of vitals yeah mm-hmm. in which condition they vary how much that uh, that are the things anything dr chandras from your point of view uh, as a post graduate when you come to tertiary center things you feel that you should have um, your or the things were new to you namaste everyone yeah. as dr radhika mentioned a very few points about to first to when to start when we start in icu yeah. she mentioned some points as a post graduate i feel doing post graduation from a government institute and when we come to a tertiary center yeah. we feel a lot of difference yeah. because the facility and the privileges we get here yeah. so first of things the importance of lines yeah. the first uh, the arterial line yeah. in the uh, people like me who uh, studied in government student yeah. they know that to, in many places we don't uh, ha, get to mm-hmm. the different basic difference between a private institute or a government institute is there not in our country any any place the workload in government hospitals is way beyond it's beyond the limits they are handling n number of patients daily when the government is trying to provide care to each and every patient who is coming to the hospital and the in private there is different there are limited amount of beds but they have quality beds they can provide services and it, things are chargeable so that uh, mm-hmm. positive negative of both the things but as he rightly said that the government setup the resources are less number of patients are uh, more so some things we are privileged in a private institutes to do a little bit more freely mm-hmm. for the, like uh, arterial line importance uh, of arterial line mm-hmm. you know how to insert arterial line and to make uh, and the int- to interpret the different gra- graphs and variations in the arterial line hemodynamic hemodynamic basically it's important yeah. for us to to know and uh-huh. to learn also okay. other things like cvp monitoring uh-huh. we have to uh, look for cvt uh, CV, cvp monitoring and uh-huh. the graphs of the cvp also some of you may feel that cvp monitoring has become obsolete but i want you all to go through an article which was published in 2099 by louis vincent who was former i think uh, president of es icm he has written a be- very beautiful article that is cvp still obsolete in the modern era so he has given 10 uh, points for that ki whether it's obsolete whether it uh, should be used or if used where should be used so it's a very beautiful article and and then you will feel that still it's a very resource cost effective uh, tool to which helps in hemodynamics monitoring of the patient if we get time we'll make a short video on that huh. and one more important thing mm. most of the time we focus on the one system all, only mm. but we should also look for the other systems and should address the problems of other system involvement and we should uh, address that and we should involve the con- def- uh, especially from that uh, specialty yeah, and uh, mm. to make uh, overall management easy and beneficial for the patient uh, what mm. dr chandras mm-hmm. wants to say that uh, intensive in intensive care unit it's a dynamic state of the patient suppose a patient of pancreatitis came to your unit so primary diagnosis is pancreatitis but there can be renal involvement there can be a, uh, other chest involvement with ARDS or there can be encephalopathy neuro involvement so it's not just that then you once you enter the uh, in unit you have a diagnosis of the patient you should in every shift do a head to toe examination obviously not the detailed one like we do in an opd but from intensive care point of view we should um, do the examination in respective manner and pick up the variations which the patient is developing because uh, it's a very dynamic state and when required take help of other specialties coordinate with them and which will help uh, for a faster recovery and uh, better management of the patient this is something which uh, which is very helpful for the patients is also dr radhika said changes in the abg and interpretation of abg and to make change in the ventilator setting according to abg this should be learned by all the residents who are working in icu setup uh, so uh, ventilator is something which is not so frequently taught or have a very structured curriculum in our um, uh, graduation days or for that matter not in all specialties uh, even in post graduation so ventilator is not a thing which you should be afraid of it's very simple uh, we have made one video with before and we are coming up with another series uh, hope it will help so ventilator is something which everybody needs to know at least the basic and i know if you understand the basic you can master it very well so anybody who is working in the icu airway management abg interpretation and ventilator management these three combination 
are a must which which i can feel which i could say that these are must which should be noted okay and other things are now for the management purpose mm -hmm. being a specialist you will be asked for the management now the first thing is choice of fluids mm -hmm. in the different type of patients mm -hmm. in the different condition choice of fluids differs so yeah. you should know all the uh, fluids which should be given which is which are contraindicated to the patient like uh, as i said earlier in the multi systemic involvement as i first i worked as a md medicine mm. so my patients are mostly for the medicine point of view mm. but here i see patients of different uh, specialty like head injury patient new, different neurologic uh, different neurosurgical patient mm. surgical patients so at that time we should know which fluid to given which fluid not should should not be given these are very important so things. like dextrose containing fluid should be avoided in a neuro patients so these are something so choice of fluids when to give when and when not to give when mm -hmm. so like we had a patient of hypernatremia and we were correcting a, and we have to take too much care that it it doesn't get corrected too fast else mm -hmm. it can develop osmotic demyelination in pancreatitis you need to use ringer lactate so on in neuro patient you do so choice of fluids when to give which to give and when not to give this is very very important other yeah. things very very important huh. choice of antibiotics <laughs> yes uh, mm -hmm. most of the times initially we cover with a empirical or broad spectrum antibiotics but later on when we get the reports we have to treat accordingly and we have, will have to change the antibiotics accordingly so this is very very crucial thank you dr chandras for bringing this choice of anti actually when we were studying the antibiotics chapter was a very smaller one in those times in, in the stress was on sympathetic drugs non sympathetic drugs other uh, parkinson drug anti epileptic drug. was antibiotic it was in the end of the book and that to in short yeah, but uh, just classification mm -hmm. but when you come to intensive care you understand that sepsis infections play a major role in the burden of intensive care unit even on a community basis so which antibiotics to give which empirical antibiotics to give when to start when how you need to give what is the pkpd of the drugs which combination should be used which not to be used so proper judicious use of antibiotics becomes very very crucial when not to use antibiotics in a patient it's not that every icu patient needs an antibiotic there are conditions where we don't need them so don't there is no need of starting there was a myth that any patient who has a foley's catheter or an arterial line or a central line needs to be put on antibiotics but now every guideline say that um, prophylactic antibiotics has no role because they uh, uh, in the on the other hand um, um, contributes to development of resistance so there it's not that a patient is in the icu every patient you need to start antibiotics there are conditions where you don't so judicious use of antibiotic good knowledge of the antibiotics and antifungals is very very crucial apart from antibiotics and fluid now we should know choice of inotropes because patients we know different types patient we uh, patients present with different types of shock huh. and they have different kind of comorbidities at them and in those patient we have to choose inotropes cautiously hmm. and accordingly so uh, this is one thing which dr radhika i think was mentioning but don't know you mentioned or not but when she came that when to start which uh, vasopressor inotrope or vasopressors first you need to understand the difference between inotrope and vasopressors vasopressin noradrenaline adrenaline are vasopressors dopamine dobutamine are inotropes so choice of inotropes choice of vasopressors when to use when when not to use whether the patient is cardiac or non cardiac or septic or um, uh, cirrhotic patient so choice of uh, vasopressors uh, differs so good knowledge about vasopressin inotropes is uh, important if we get time there is a lot of demand on this lecture we'll make it soon also uh, uh, on the channel and uh, after covering so many points mm -hmm. the one thing is which is which is very very important is the counseling and communication with the attendants mm -hmm. because uh, when the attendants come to the patient and we have so many critical patients there they'll ask first to the nursing staff mm -hmm. about the condition of the patient and their nursing staff will definitely direct them mm -hmm. to us Uh -huh. so we should know uh -huh. about the patient we should know about the prognosis and the condition on at and the, uh, being uh, thinking about that and to keep the mind of the uh, 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 keep the status of the uh, attendants also uh -huh. about the their mental status 
and how much they have expanded mm. uh, about uh, on the patients so we should know and we have to uh, learn some skills about the counseling of the patient so this is very 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 important you know your patient every patient is critical in the icu and there are limitations of visiting are usually one or two times for to for the uh, but different there are strict protocols because it helps in better care and avoidance of infections to the patient and so the attendants meet the patient um, one or two times so whenever you meet them you need to have a proper understanding what are the attendants which are there with the patient who is staying here what are the responsibilities who can take decision they should be clarified in a simple manner in their language about the condition of the patient prognosis what is your plan for next 24 hours so they they, they have at least their stress will not go away but it will come down they know what is going on they can further communicate with their relatives which they which people are calling them from the outside you know what is happening with the patient what is happening with the patient if they understand well they are fair confident enough that this is the thing and this we are doing and make them feel they are involved in the treatment part and for this you need to be have a proper communication with the consultants you need to have proper discussion with them what is going on in their mind what is the plan so that all people should be on the same page whenever there is a lack of communication it create conflicts and stress i see the stressful environment both for the doctors and the icu team and for the nurses and also for the attendants so any lacuna sorry it got interrupted in between we had a call from the icu so again i was saying about counseling of the attendants so what i was saying that if they are counseled well if they are explained well even if their stress doesn't go away it will come down a little bit and they will have a little peace of mind that confidence that what is going on with the patient they can communicate to the relatives and they make them in, feel involved in the treatment uh, they should feel involved whenever there is a communication gap most of the conflict arises there because it's a stressful environment both for the intensive care team both for the attendant and for the patient so chances of lack of communication are very very less so this this thing should be kept there is an art there is a, a, another session uh, for how to do a proper counseling in the intensive care unit uh, we had unfortunately not able to record that but once and while we'll get a chance and we'll share different different examples in that Uh, how to communicate will uh, whenever we get time we'll upload and share with you all anything more dr chandras you want to add i just want to add basically we have covered uh, all the all, all the points as dr radhika suggested we should uh, learn some basic things first like airway management as sir said airway management reading of ecg reading uh, to know the vitals abnormality of vitals when to chase the vitals mm. and uh, Uh, other uh, important procedures like central line insertion arterial line insertion and interpretation of the uh, graft which uh, we uh, look for in the monitor uh, interpretation of abg ventilators and uh, even to look for the rhythm heart rate monitoring in the uh, monitor, monitor in monitor also in rhythm to check the rhythm also in the monitor because once we have done ecgs and sometimes it's normal ecg should be uh, it can be normal mm. but during the stay or during the admission we see that patient's rhythm has been changing mm. so we should look for uh, that and we should notice that also change change also mm. and accordingly mm. we should manage and uh, important things like uh, electrolytes uh, to know the electrolyte value of electrolytes mm. and uh, other things like uh, most of the things are has covered okay radhika anything you want to add which we have missed till now um and on my point of view i got it all for me Uh, uh, I made a mistake uh, when uh, <laughs> I got confused with a uh, VF. Mm. Uh, that was actually a wrong guy. Patient was mm. shivering. So and, artifacts. Uh, yeah, it yeah, was artifacts. an artifact. Yeah. So these are the things which I have learned uh, be- uh, out of my mistakes. Yeah. And the antibiotics um, is important. Um, IV fluid management, RBS also. Sometimes we neglect sugar management. Yeah, sugar yeah. management. Very very important. Uh, yeah. yeah. Sometimes patient uh, is in hyperglycemic state. We just managing the uh, sugar, but uh, he landed up sometimes in the keto acidosis. That I have made a mistake though. That's why I'm mentioning. Hmm. So always uh, we should go for uh, the ketones also if okay. the sugar is uncontrolled. So, so hyperglycemia is itself an independent uh-huh. marker of. Uh, not so good prognosis in the intensive care unit but mm. liberal control or regular control of the sugar should be there yes and niv settings niv settings so 
these are the experience of a fresher and a postgraduate uh, what are things different in ICU so let me conclude in, in three four minutes as an interviewer when I uh, uh, when a fresh candidate comes from the HR that the, he or she wants to join the ICU what are things going on in my mind whether I can uh, keep that particular uh, candidate in my intensive care unit or not so first thing very very important is it should be very clear in the mind of the candidate that it's going to be a demanding job. It's not the difference between, as my teacher used to explain me, the difference uh, between a normal uh, police uh, or normal um, law and order maintaining situation uh, that is different. But whenever there is a crisis come, we take help of the army or commandos. So intensive care units is just like army or commandos. They don't know the, uh, they don't have time. Uh, they don't know which bugs are uh, making the patient critical they don't know um, uh, they don't have time to take a proper detail history from the background it comes later on obviously but what considering all the factors they have to save the patient so intensive care unit is a very demanding job so first thing i look in the candidate what is the reason of joining intensive care unit for that particular candidate if it just uh, uh, that let us try uh, intensive care unit or few months are left for the exam I want to do a few ICU but that's not the case you should have a clear concept in mind that I want to learn intensive care this is the one thing I feel when I uh, it keeps in my mind when I take a uh, candidate um, uh, for interview secondly there are few important basic skills which a candidate should have minimum have I'm not talking about all the uh, skills I'm talking about the basic skills one airway management what airway management uh, point of view I want that you should be uh, good enough to manage the patient in terms of ACLS protocol ambu uh, definitely and obviously intubation is one thing which I inquire and I make sure that this candidate needs airway management. Yeah, he also asked me like 10 times, can you intubate? <laughs> you sure you intubate? <laughs> <laughs> so, because and all other procedures, whether it's a, a central line, arterial line, or any other procedure, they give you time. They are never an emergency. Even if you want them, the, the uh, helps come from, um, uh, from the surrounding. Our whole team is available in all the hospitals. But airway management is something which should be prompt enough. The patient should, doesn't, uh, should not go into hypoxia. So airway management I, I ask specifically. Then the basic understanding of ventilators, ABGs, ECGs, your electrolyte imbalances. These are the few things so, uh, which I inquire or uh, ask about the some basic conditions like how you manage DK, how you manage stroke, how you manage MI, how you manage uh, pancreatitis, how you manage COPD, asthma. So at some list of 5-6 conditions which are very very common in intensive care units. So the candidate should have a fair idea about how to manage these. So that comes under airway, ABG, ECGs and all those things. Now these are the things which a candidate should know. After the candidate has joined, what are the things? In the intensive care unit what basic things they should learn as a fresher uh, so these there are certain diseases I will if you go through the book there are uh, hundreds of uh, uh, things in the intensive care book but if you go and see your data of the hospital or of your unit of the ICU there are some 15 20 or I would not say 15 20 there are 10 to 15 condition which frequently comes to the ICU like your MIs like your stroke, like your COPD, ARDS, like renal failure, dialysis patients, cirrhotic, upper GI bleed, pancreatitis, ectopic pregnancies, uh, septic, septic shock, uh, acute abdomen, and uh, trauma. Uh, okay, trauma. So, uh, burns, if, if you have burn in a unit. So, these are few t 9 to 10 conditions which you should be very, very uh, thorough with. At least you should read them you should know them how, how to manage them because once you read them you will be able to pick the changes which are going in the patient so these things needs to master now these are the conditions and obviously I have told you airway management ventilator 
electrolytes, ECGs, means MI, your antibiotic, sepsis. So these things need to be mastered in the ICU. If you have uh, mastery over these things, I don't feel that you will be anxious to work in any intensive care unit. From uh, a postgraduate point of view, now you are talking about a consultant who is taking care of the intensive care unit. From a postgraduate point of view, managing the patient, ability to take the decision, head to toe examinations, uh, vigilance over all the systems of the patient. Even if the patient comes with a particular condition, you need to keep an eye on all the conditions. Obviously, the condition which gets affected most, that is important, but keeping an eye on all the, all, all the patients, including your nutrition status, feeds going on, motion passing or not. There are n numbers of little, 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 little things which are very important. So, the, though the registrar will take care, but a pool, the consultant level should keep an eye on all. You can't miss them. There are different, different uh, mnemonics or practice to like fast tag BID, you take care of the DVT prophylaxis, air matrices, blood source, um, uh, suctioning of the patient, taking care of eye care, oral care, n number of things are there. Um, uh, Cross infection prevention, these are important. In, also, communication with the patient is very important. Now, when we talk about communication, it's not the communication only with the attendants, the communication with the different specialities. If it's an MI and we now lands up in the AKI or if it's an AKI lands up into the flu double or ARDS or if it's a pancreatitis landing into sepsis, picking the things timely in the ICU, being vigilant in the ICU, being observant in the ICU and communicating the consultant and then coordinating with the team is very, very important. And believe me, no two people are same. Every consultant has a different psyche. Every consultant has a different speciality. You are the you are playing a private role in that, and you need to communicate things which are required to that consultant in that manner so that the it can help the patient in a better way. Now, not only communication with attendant and consultant communication and having a good rapport with your supporting team which includes your nursing they play a very very crucial role in taking care of the patient most of the time for almost all the time they are with the patient they are treating irritable patient critical patients they are um, uh, talking with the relatives so your communication at times you need to tighten them at times it needs to pamper them and I, at times you need to teach them uh, regarding the conditions so suppose oligura is important but in a patient who has gone into spinal uh, pituitary tumor surgery if the urine is coming 300 400 ml uh, that you needs to be explained to that particular patient i want to mention uh, one thing i was listening to a talk of ms dhoni i am a fan of him so he told me what he learned as a captaincy over a period of years is that common sense is not so common you may feel that when 11 pairs are discussing a thing you may feel that certain one thing is very common and I think it not, needs not to be explained. Uh, everybody must leave. But the importance for a captain is you need to explain even the minor details so that you never know which point the 11th player didn't understand. So you need to repeat that point. So like if a pituitary tumor surgery patient, you need to explain the staff that if the urine hour is more than 250 ml per hour for next three hours do inform the reason being this patient may land in di we need to act on them staff gets rotated very fast in different department intra-departmental they go and come again so make sure that you communicate with your nursing team in a very uh, teaching manner the more you teach the more you, they will learn and the more they will understand now from where to read all this so we had a made a lecture on which books to read in ICU. The link is in the description. You can go and read them. But I always say for the repetition, I am saying the ICU book is the starting point. O's text O's manual is a textbook. Washington manual should always be in the on the your lab coat and references books are many. And then there are different um, journals and things are there where you can go to and reference. We are trying to cover uh, uh, the basic uh, or I would say the most we, we are trying to cover the majority of these topics on our channel whether it's a ventilator or antibiotics or electrolyte fluid balances. We are not teaching them in a uh, formal manner. We are teaching them, we are trying to teach them and convey what we know in a practical manner 
so that anybody who is working in the intensive care unit, whether it's a small unit, large unit, tertiary unit, primary unit, secondary unit, all those who are working can be benefited and ultimately this benefit will uh, convey to the carrier and also to the patient and the outcome. So I hope this is a, this was a candid interview or candid talk between our two doctors and if you have any experiences or if you have any suggestions for our channel, do share with us in the comments. Thank you for listening. Thank you for sparing time. Thank you, Dr. Radhika. Thank, Thank you, Dr. Chandras. Thank you. Namaste.